Hey! How's it going, everyone? Welcome to session six, the sixth and final session of the Cyber Forensics Workshop. Today is going to be really, really fun. This is the day I've been waiting for. The first thing I'm going to do is go right to our notes. So you'll find the day six notes uploaded to our Google Drive share, and I'm going to put them on my screen now. And the notes are very telling. All right, so here's our Google Drive, or excuse me, our Google Hangout link. And I'll put the YouTube link when it's available, and I'll re-upload the notes. But at this point, we're going to talk about the challenges. And we're going to go through who provided the challenges, which, by the way, was a group called LMG Security, and they're out of Montana. To begin this, in fact, let me scroll back up here. Don't look at that for now. You know what? Let's just go back. Let's do it this way. I'll just talk to you. So for sessions one through five, what we did is we went through some curriculum-based stuff, and then we evolved ourselves in a challenge. Excuse me. What we're going to do today is we're going to try to synthesize most of that by focusing on the challenge aspect. The only way to really properly gauge how much you're able to ingest from this type of content is to get your hands on a keyboard. Type, 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 type. Hopefully it's a mechanical keyboard. I love mechanical keyboards. Oh, man. So, yeah, without further ado, let's just get into it. Nothing specifically, no curriculum to go over. We're going to go over a bunch of challenges. Now, I'm going to share out my Kali screen. All right, let's unlock this puppy. password there. So here we go. We have been farting around with challenges that were made by a group called LMG Security. Okay? LMG Security, they have been doing the forensic, or technically the Network Forensics Puzzle Contest, the NFPC, for DEF CON. So DEF CON is the largest hacker conference in the world. We were there in, what was it, August? I'm already forgetting now. What, what month? Yeah, early August. First week of August. I was there with my team, and not only does LMG put out these fantastic puzzles, but our team, Team Doofer, Doofer, Do Forensics, D-O-F-I-R, we took first place this year. So at DEF CON 22, our team took first place in the Forensic Challenge. Now, a couple things. First off, the name. Oh, let me scroll. Hold on. Here we go. There. There we go. So our name, Doofer, what's that all about? Well, DFIR, Digital Forensics and Incident Response. DFIR is a standard term. Well, Doofer is do it. Do it. <laughs> you know that beam going around like, do it. I already forgot what movie that was. Was it Starcy and Hush? Nah, I already forgot, to be honest, what movie it came from. But everyone knows it, right? Do it. So that's where our name came from. All right, so Team Doofer. We took first place, and I organized the team. But I will tell you right now, there's no way in heck that I would have even come close to getting first place by myself. The last couple of years, this individual, Tom Pohl, has been working with a couple different people and he's been placing second. In fact, let's go take a look at Tom Pohl's site. I think it's just TomPohl.com? That might not be it. No, that's it, yeah. So Tom's World, in the DEF CON 21 challenge, which was from 2013, he took second place. And he did a nice little write-up on the challenge. And if I open this right up, and some of you may have found this, I was trying to get you to not find this, but some of you may have found this, you'll notice that this is the challenge we were going over. So he provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to go through the challenge. Well, his aren't necessarily step-by-step, -step, but more right nitty-gritty to the point. So here, you might recognize this, how does Wednesday sound? And then the city they're meeting, and then the picture of Las Vegas. So this is the challenge we were going over. So I obfuscated the challenge a little bit. I didn't take the copyright out because I talked to LMG and they were like, I don't know about all that. So what I did, however, was just made black text on a black background. I just didn't want you guys to see immediately who created it because you would quickly find 
Well, for one, Tom's write up. And for two, the website they have, and then you would launch into other Google searches and find every single answer, and then it wouldn't be any fun. So, credit where credit is due, Team LMG. LMG has done a lot for the community. One of the main things, of course, that they've done is this challenge. It's a, it's a massive challenge. Now, the challenge has evolved over time. You know what? Before, let me digress. Before I get into the challenge, and by the way, the website, forensicscontest.com, which is where I am right now, this is their website devoted to the challenge. Okay? So before I go to that, let's get rid of Tom's site. I want to explain a couple things. LMG has written a book on network forensics. Now, this is Amazon. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Amazon. Okay? Watch this. I'm going to type in network forensics. Hey, look at that. First book that pops up, this is LMG's book. See? Woo! So, network forensics tracking hackers through cyberspace. Ah. I waited for a used copy to drop down in price. It was published in, I think, 2012? Yeah. If you look below that, how many other books do we have on network forensics? Well, we have one called Mastering Windows Network Forensics and Investigation. And then we start going into, well, here's a book on Python, which, by the way, is an amazing book on Python. If you don't have violent Python and you want to get into Python, that's probably your first stop right there. I, I highly suggest it, by the way. This book over here, which I've never heard of, Computer Forensics Investigating Network Intrusions in Cybercrime. Yeah, I'm not sure how much that's actually going to be network forensics as opposed to a bunch of computer forensics. Same thing with this guy down here. Mastering Windows Network Forensics and Investigation. Just the fact that we're throwing in the word Windows here. In fact, are these... Can I see into these? Let's find out. Like this guy right here. Let me see if I can take a look into this guy. Oh, oh yeah, I can. Cool. All right. What do you have for me? Yeah, I want your table of contents. May I have it? Ooh, I may. Microsoft network structure. Don't care. Beyond the Windows, don't care. Windows patch, don't care. Windows ports and services. Analyzing the computer. Yeah, okay, that's cute. This is called network forensics? No, this is a computer forensics book. We're using InCase? Are you kidding me? That is 100% computer forensics. Get out of here. Registry evidence. Yeah, done. This is not, and I repeat, not a network forensics text. How dare you? Hey, the guy's name is Ryan. <laughs> How dare that other Ryan? All right, I figured that was going to happen. Let's take a look at this one over here. Computer forensics, investigating network intrusions. Click. All right, we can take a look into this one, too. Let's see your table of contents, good sir. Oops. All right. Network forensics investigating logs. Okay. Investigating network traffic. Sounds good. Web attacks. Router forensics. Okay. Investigating DOS attacks. Internet crime. Corporate espionage. This looks like a fairly high level book. Oh, here we go. All right. Type of web attacks. Tools. I grab Nagios. Okay. This does look fairly decent then. The, well, chapter two looks decent, excuse me. Chapter four, router forensics, investigating DOS. Okay, so this one actually looks fairly decent. I wouldn't mind taking a look into this book then. I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> I'll wait till the use price drops down. I actually have, I have a problem with books. I have a, a shelf behind me that you have seen, and I have some shelves you haven't seen. <laughs> I don't want to show them. It's like I'm a hoarder for computer books. I, I have a problem. In fact, I just bought, I just had one delivered yesterday, and I have another one on the way now. <laughs> I, I really do have a problem. Moving on. All right, my point that I'm trying to make here is, like, here's a book on network security monitoring, NSM. That's not going to be network forensics. Uh, here's the go-to book on NSM, by the way, if you're into NSM. So this guy right here, one of my coworkers is friends with him. This is the 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 de facto go-to book. It goes over Security Onion. If you're if you want to take this further. Grab this book, download Security Onion, install it, walk through the book. Done. That gives you a, a, a very, very high level and low level for that matter because you're going to be installing applications hands-on while well, using them in Security Onion on how to set up the network security monitoring that we have been utilizing by, you know, having fun in the packet captures. Well, you don't just capture, you know, capture a packet by opening Wireshark on a computer. You have to set up an entire infrastructure. This book covers that, and it's a fantastic book. Okay. So, going back to my point, 
LMG's book on network forensics is one of the few books that goes deep into the actual stuff that we're doing right now. Okay, so I'm I'm not trying to to sell their book. In fact, I will tell you right now, I have not completely read this book. I've recently acquired the text, and because you know I like to I buy these books. Oh, they're so fun. I lied about those other books, by the way. The ones I said I was going to wait till they go on sale. Yeah, that's a bold faced lie. I'm going to buy them later today. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, my wife's going to kill me. But what I've read so far, it's here. Here's exactly how the network layers are involved, and blah 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 blah. And then, oh, bam, hands-on analysis. So that's it's good stuff. Okay, so back to LMG. So LMG Security. Before we go to their website with all the puzzles that I clicked on before, and I was going to get all handsy with, let me kind of explain who they are and their evolution. LMG Security. They are, in fact, over here is the about and the about us. Hey, see these people here? Yeah, I have not met these people here. These are more the corporate people. I'm assuming these guys look like pen testers, especially this guy. Look at that cocky look. Look at this guy. Hold on. Let me zoom in. Check him out. He's like, yeah, I'll break in your network. Whatever. <laughs> I like that guy already. Anyways, these are not the people who come to DEF CON. So the people who come to DEF CON, the ones who write the puzzles, they're not in this little pretty picture with suits. So, meh. But they are a consulting agency out of Montana, and they are kind of a big fish in a little pond kind of thing, if you will. They're the, the go-to group if you're in Montana, especially for on-site type of stuff. So I, I had no idea what the, the scene is there. I just know that from what I've heard at DEF CON, if anyone in that general area, that entire state and surrounding goes to LNG. What I also know is that they have expanded their puzzle contest. So they put the contest out for a couple of reasons. Let's go to their website. Again, it's ForensicsContest.com. One of the major reasons they put this contest out, I found, was not only to involve the community, but also they wanted to see what ways people could come up with to solve these puzzles that would derive additional content for the users, but also themselves. Now, keep in mind, they're a consulting agency. Consulting agencies have particular goals in mind, okay? So, for example, we see our puzzles here on the puzzles page, right? Puzzle 1, puzzle 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The puzzle page stops here, and all of a sudden they're talking about purchasing puzzles. What? Get out of here. So the 2014 puzzle that our team just took first place on, apparently they're going to sell it now. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Actually, I'm 100% I'm sure on how I feel about that, but I'll, I'll digress. I like that word, digress. And you can probably see where I'm going here. Sell your puzzle. I'll sell your freaking puzzle. Get out of here. All right, so <laughs> they're selling it for 6 bucks. Do they, deserve, they Do they deserve the $6? Heck, yeah, they do. Yeah, but still. All right, so this is the one that we did. Uh, yeah, we're not going to touch the 2014 one. What I want to do is I'm going to show you that they have evolved their puzzles. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go through the puzzles. I have already gone through puzzle one, so I know puzzle one. I looked at puzzle two. I didn't go through it. I didn't touch puzzle three, and I have not done four, five, and six. I'm pretty sure that I've done seven, and, well, and actually, dark tangent. No, I've not done seven. I have done eight and beyond, I believe. So the goal for today is to show you what their initial puzzles look like. And before I show you what the initial ones look like, let's not forget that the most recent puzzle that they did, they provided a walkthrough. They provide some metrics on time calculations. If you look right here where the mouse is, I'll just circle it a couple times, the finishing time for our team was 49 hours and 3 minutes. To give some context to this, when we were competing in this challenge, hold on, you have to see my face for this one. All right. When we were competing in this challenge, my goal, because, again, their puzzles evolved. I'll, I'll start down here. They evolved from network forensics to network forensics and computer forensics and into this hodgepodge of, like, oh, my God, are you kidding me right now? So I gather our team at work, and I'm like, hey, man, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to DEF CON, and on the day that they release the puzzle, <laughs> Friday, what we're going to do is we're going to do the puzzle for about five hours. 
take first place, right? And then go enjoy the festivities, right? Five hours. Why did I say five hours? Well, it's because the last couple of years they've taken around five hours. Yeah, we finished in 49 hours. <laughs> we missed all of Friday and all of Saturday. So how did this work out? Well, they released the disc at noon on Friday. We grabbed the disc, we pop it into our computers, we've got our team assembled in the room, we're all ready to go, we're caffeinated, yeah, like I am right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> we're ready to rock it out. We load up the first level and I find the answer within like four minutes. It wasn't even five minutes and I shout it out and everyone's like, yeah, go Ryan, you're amazing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm amazing. And then level two, and then, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have the answer to level two. We helped one another throughout the level. In fact, I think, did they put a chart of individual round completion times, number of finishes, okay, average time spent per round, and eh, time and hours. So the average time on round one was 25 hours. Eh, no, not so much. Round one was very, very easy. Round two, the average was around five hours. You know, I don't remember how long it took us for the individual rounds. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I don't have that value. Oh, well. But I'll tell you that it took a team effort, and it required quite a bit of time. By the end of the first night, I think I went to bed at midnight, and I woke up at, I think, 5. And it was a scramble when I woke up, are we still in first place? Like, are we, For that matter, did anyone finish already? Because we didn't know how hard this thing was going to be. It was already far more difficult than every other year. So I go to sleep. No, that's a lie. I didn't go to sleep at 12. I went to sleep at 3. Yeah, at 11 o'clock, we decided, yeah, uh, oh, well, all right, let's go get a drink. So we go drink just a little bit, go back, go to sleep by, like, 3. Well, someone wakes me up at, like, I think it was right before 6. It's like, hey, man, we're still in first place. It's like, oh, I got four hours of sleep. We're, we're still doing this? And it snaps into place. We go from 6 in the morning to, oh, I don't know, 10 p.m. at night, and we're not cracking uh, stage, I think we're on stage 6 at that point out of 7. Oh man, we're not there. We're not done yet. Ah, this is crazy. So I just said, you know what? I this is we. This may be a wash. I don't know. I go drink. I get back at six in the morning. They wake me up at nine. I get three hours of sleep. And like, dude, we're still in first place. Like, what? <laughs> no one's finished this thing. Are you kidding me? So then we crack at it, and I'm told, hey, we have progress. Like, we have what? Who's been awake? Why do we have progress? <laughs> One of our guys stayed up the whole night. So we reverse engineer some iOS application that's used to crack stored passwords on encrypted backups for iOS, and we convert it to be used for, it's originally for iOS I think 3, 4, maybe 5, and we convert it to work with iOS 7, and all of a sudden we have a, a key that we can use to decrypt some traffic and a PCAP, and we're like, oh my God, we're going to win, and then we, we won. Yeah. Oh, that feeling was amazing, but... That whole story, the reason I, I went over that whole little story there is to explain it can take a team effort, things can be dicey, they can be hairy, but you're still eventually going to find the answer. I mean, yeah, we took first place, which is awesome, but at the same time, even if we came in last place, just finishing it would have been amazing. And if you look on your screen here, which I'll share out, I'm going to try to share out, here we go, you'll see that only three teams finished. And not only did our team finish, but behind our team, Tom Pohl, who got fourth place two years ago and second place one year ago, he joined up with Team Blue. They needed to join up. Once they saw that we completed it, they were like, ah, dang it, and they just joined forces, and then three hours later they completed it. So this was a challenge. Are you kidding me? Now this guy right here, is the walkthrough that they have put together. We will be putting together one on our team's blog. We, we spun up a blog. You guys have seen my blog, the one that I have with some coworkers. That's not the one I'm referring to. Our overall team has a blog, and we might be putting our walkthrough on there. Did I not click? I didn't click. Clicking is hard. Oh, I did. I'm just blind. All right, so the Network Forensic Puzzle Contest, there's the breakdown here. And this makes it look so easy. Oh, it was so easy. Just do these things. Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. 49 hours. Five people hands on the keyboard, some consultants floating in and out of the room, some remote guys running some password brute force cracking utilities, which never really gave us anything. Oh, my goodness. And then the final answer. Oh, man. Are you kidding me with all this? Okay. Now, 
Let's put that to the side. Let's see, where how far are we into this bad boy? All right, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some puzzles. So their first puzzle was very basic. Anne's bad AIM, which is AOL Instant Messenger, for those who are not familiar. I'll zoom in a little bit here. All right, Anarchy R Us suspects that one of their employees, Ander Cover, <laughs> Ander Cover, stupid little play on words there, is really a secret agent working for their competitor. That's that's by the way that that happens. It's not that's not fantasy. That <laughs> these things happen. Just saying. Anne has access to the company's prize asset, the secret recipe. Okay, so in our world, we consider this intellectual property, IP. One of the number one things you want to protect is your IP. Without going into specific details, I work for a company that is the largest construction company in the United States and one of the top X whatever in the world, right? I mentioned that in session one. Well, what do you think our intellectual property is? Well, we build international bridges. We build motorways. We build uh, nuclear plants. We build this. We build that. We also do stuff in liquid natural gas. So our intellectual property, anyone can build a freaking building. Right, but how do you build a mega project? And for that matter, how do you deal with liquid natural gas? And what different methods and procedures, M and P's, are involved in that? Those are the those are the major IPs that we need to protect. If someone breaks into our CEO's computer and grabs his email. Oh, are you kidding me? Who is he talking to? What is he talking about? Is he talking about a bid contract? Is that bid going to be for X billions of dollars? And if someone else knows it, and they could bid one million less, or well. If you're in that value, I guess 100 million less, and then land the project, and then just yeah, oh no, right? So those are things we have to protect. Okay, so IP in general is one of the number one things you need to protect. That's what this puzzle is is doing, although it's doing it in a playful fashion because we're dealing with a secret recipe, like literally just a little recipe. So security staff is worried about that recipe, and and she might be doing some silly stuff. Okay. Security staff has been monitoring Ann's activity for some time, but haven't found anything suspicious until now. We're about right here. Today, an unexpected laptop briefly appeared on the company wireless network. Staff hypothesized it may have been someone in the parking lot because no strangers were seen in the building. Ann's computer, this guy here, sent instant messages over the wireless network to this computer. The rogue laptop disappeared shortly thereafter. Ooh. We have a packet capture of the activity, but we can't figure out what's going on. You are the forensic investigator. Cool. Let's save the packet capture. Session six. Save it as evidence one. And here are the questions that we need to answer. All right. Let's put this in our notes. Here we go. All right. Zoom in on these notes. Uh, yeah, well, I can do this. Ooh, here we go. Should have done that a long time ago, but whatever. All right, so we're going to answer these questions. I'll just put some little returns in there. All right. So what are we going to be looking into? We need to find out the name of Anne's instant messenger buddy. Name of, oh, no, what was the first comment in the captured instant message conversation? What is the name of the file Anne transferred? So we're going to look for some type of file transfer. What is the magic number of the file you want to extract? What was the MD5 sum of the file? And then finally, what is the secret recipe itself? Now, before we do anything, I want everyone to understand the fact that we have an evidence file. Okay, What they're looking for is the most elegant solution. This was not a difficult challenge, but what they wanted, they wanted, and there's some comments here. Yeah, those are boring. What they wanted, they wanted people to create tools. And for that matter, if you go to the tools section of this web page, you will see where they are hosting these tools. Now, it's convenient that they've provided these tools for everyone to use, but please keep in mind that primarily their reason, for example, here someone made this tool for contest number one, which is what we're doing right now. So when they created these tools, LNG now has these tools available, of course. So that's what they're going to be doing. Here's some tools for the challenges that we're going to go over, so let me get out of there. All right, we're not going to create tools to do this. We're going to use Wireshark because that's what we've been covering the whole darn time. Okay, where are we? We have our packet capture. Do, 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 do. There we are. 
let's open it up. Now, we know that we're going to have AOL instant messenger traffic. So the first thing we do before we even touch this freaking thing is we go to Google. And we just, hey, look at that. I just checked for, let me zoom in, AIM Wireshark. And I found on the Wireshark wiki, we have AIM. So it looks like the protocols is decoded correctly by Wireshark. And if it wasn't, I'd be extremely surprised. Okay, so we're going to be able to pull a bunch of information. And here's all the decoding information. I don't really care about this right now. In general, you do care about this, but I'm not going to read the entire thing. Ah, here we go. The AIM dissector is fully functional, partly functional, not existing, whatever. Oh, okay. They didn't, they didn't answer that. <laughs> also, add info. Okay, so this looks like notes to themselves. Let's just pretend that's not there. All right. Example capture. Hey, look at that. Here's an example capture of what to expect from AIM traffic, and I can even filter on AIM. And here's something vitally important. AIM traffic default port 5190. So we're going to take this right here. We're going to copy that and put it in our notes. Capture only AIM traffic over port 5190. Okay, I'm just going to do this. Okay, we know Wireshark supports it. Simple. 45190, protocol should read as AIM in Wireshark. Cool. And we have an example capture. One of the great things that you can do with these example captures is download them. Take a look at them. There we go. Wait a minute, did I do that right? No, I need to click it. Yeah. There we go. That's what I want. All right, save this guy right there. Go to our folder. This is whatever that is going. Whoop. All right, let's open up the example AOL PCAP. And scroll down. Oh, well, here, let's just do this. Filter AIM. Why? Ooh, nothing. Okay. Well, it's supposed to be on port 5190, so I've already made a filter here. And the filter, you can see the tooltip pop up, is just tcp.port equals 5190. Hey, there we go. So, there's something. We're showing the protocol is TCP, but we're seeing the destination port 5190, and then we're seeing a source port 5190. So this is a communication, AOL instant messenger communication. Now... Here's where we're going to have some fun with Wireshark. They get, this is the example packet capture that they provided on the Wireshark wiki. And yet, I don't see AIM being decoded here, right? We have PPP, IP, TCP. If I right-click on this and follow the stream, looks like AOL stuff to me. Okay, now here's the kicker. Why are we not seeing exactly what's transpiring in this communication? I don't know. But what we can do is filter on 5190, and then we're going to try a trick Wireshark here. Let's see, where's outgoing? Here's an outgoing. I like this one. Right-click, and it's under decode as. We're currently decoding as standard TCP. Transport, AIM, apply, hit OK. Bam! What's our protocol now? AIM. What? That's why Wireshark is amazing. And now we see over here IP, TCP, and AOL Instant Messenger. So it looks like we just have some channel commands here. Boring, boring, boring. Please. Message of the day. Boring. These are all boring. <laughs> Anything good? No? Nothing good? Server info? They're all boring. User info. Hey, there we go. There's a buddy name. Ah, check it out. They got user info, so we have the buddy name now. And we got some other stuff. But most importantly, here's a buddy name. In fact, in our challenge, we have to find a buddy name, right? Let's go do it. All right, so we've analyzed that. We had to do decode at a particular decoder. We had AOL instant messenger traffic. How do we know? Well, port 5190, and it just looked like it, but it was decoding as TCP. 
So we right clicked and said decode as. We may have to do that in this packet capture. Just saying. All right, we open up the capture. Now, what evidence do we have? Let's not forget that we have, I did not add to my notes, and I need to. Go back here. Go back here. And there we go. This is what I forgot to grab. Anne's computer IP address. All right, 192.168.1158. Okay. Well, it says she sent some instant messages to this person. So they gave us a massive hint there. Okay. So what we're going to do now, hold on. I know I have multiple things open. Oh, this is bothering me. You go away, and I'm done with you. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go over here to statistics and conversations. Wait for it to load. And... Da, 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 da. IP conversations. Her IP is 1.158. There it is. Sort by address A. All right. Looks like we have some communication to 239. What? No. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Excuse me. Ignore that. That's yeah, it was ex external. Not even close. So we have activity from 158 to 159. Here are the packets, right? So check this out. Without even going through all the traffic in there and doing all kinds of whatever, we can just do this. Right click, apply as filter, select it, and then do we want A to B? Eh, we want, yeah, A to B, yeah, A to B. And then close. Hey, check it out. So we just found what seems to be AIM traffic. Notice it's being decoded as TCP, because why wouldn't it? Right? Got to make our lives difficult here. Now, how did we find this? Well, they gave us the IP address, and they said she was communicating with the person that we're worried about. So we just went to the conversations, and we set a filter. So we're looking for this address and this address. Looks like that's who, who we're dealing with. And look, we found TCP port 5190. Cool. Now, if I right-click on this and follow the stream, I have a file signature or something here of OFT2 with recipe.doc. No, no, wait, recipe.docx, excuse me. Okay, and so that's going to be a 2007-plus Word file, and it starts right here. This is the header. They're actually zip files with XML content, and here's the content in XML. So I just have to know that we're probably going to need to carve this file out. Okay, cool. Well, OFT2 is Oscar file transfer. If you didn't know what that was, you would search OFT2 because you're wondering, well, what is that? Now, the funny thing is, is it takes you right to the site for the challenge. So, yeah. Wireshark is like, it literally took over the Google responses. It's not common, apparently. But if you just do that, and then AIM... Fun with Wireshark and AIM. My first thought was reverse engineer the AA OFT2 protocol. So if you open this up right here, and this, by the way, also, you, know, you have a virus? Sure, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I'm on my VM. I'll take your virus. It's actually another site dedicated to this thing. So let's get out of here because he's, he's giving answers away. So you stop it. It ends up being the Oscar file transfer pro protocol. And here's the file being transferred. And it seems like that's the recipe file. That's what we need. Okay, but what I want to do, clear that out, go back to our filter, apply it. I want to decode this as AIM traffic. So I'm going to decode as, transport AIM, apply, 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 apply. Oh, it's not decoding it. Why is it not decoding it? I don't know. Let's try it again. Let's try it down here. Decode as, AIM, apply, apply. Oh. So here's the problem. This isn't necessarily AIM specifically. It's Oscar file transfer, which is a proprietary AOL file transfer. And even though, even though Wireshark claims to be able to decode it, it's not doing it now. If we go to, I just went to preferences here, and I can go to protocols, and then I can scroll down. Actually, will it be in here? No, it's not going to be in here. It might be under AIM, actually. Or AOL. It might just be under AOL. Yeah, here's AOL. Oh, whatever. <laughs> That's boring. Yeah. 
So, no loves. Okay, what's going on? Well, I don't know. Let's clear this out. Let's look at all traffic on port 5190. All right, so we are looking at 5190 traffic. And look at this. It's the same thing we're already looking at. Okay, this is just the Oscar traffic. Well, I need, I know I can carve my file out of here. I'm pretty darn sure of that. So let's set this up now. Let's do follow stream. And then we have two sides to our conversation. There's one side setting up the transfer. And then, hey, look at this side. This is the file that we're going to want to take. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to save it as recipe.binary. Save it. Close it. But we don't have the, the initial information that we need. Right? Remember, we're supposed to find out the name of the AIM buddy. So we need to find out what happened. To find out what happened, we clear our filter, go to the top, and we scroll down. Let's see what we have here. SSH, okay. NTP, ARP, TCP, SSL communication. SSL, why do we have SSL communication here? Continuation of data. I didn't see an SSL setup, did you? No, there's no handshake. There's no SSL handshake. Right click, follow stream. <laughs> well, yeah, so here's our AIM traffic. So what's happening? Here's what I noticed first off. We have a continuation of traffic, SSL. I didn't see an SSL handshake, which really doesn't mean anything because our packet capture could have simply not grabbed the SSL handshake. It's pretty simple. But I see the 158 her computer, and I see this external IP. It's going over port 443, and as such, all right, Wireshark says, yeah, it's SSL. Is it? Is it SSL? Well, I don't know. What is it? Well, if we right-click on it, and we go to decode as, and we set AIM and apply. Oh, hey, look at that. It just decoded it as AIM, and now we filter on AIM. We apply it. And now we have some AOL instant message traffic. Right click, follow the stream. There's our stream dump, which we were already looking at. So I see it's probably a, a buddy name here. And I see a message. Here's the secret recipe. I just downloaded it from the file server. Just copy to a thumb drive, and you're good to go. And oh, look. Thanks, dude. That shows up. Oh, and then down here. See you in Hawaii. Cool. Okay, here's the fun part, though. That's not that's not handed to us. Here's what's handed to us. The very top, the decoding of AOL Instant Messenger. You just go through the packets. Message, outgoing. The buddy. Who's the buddy? Sec558 user1. And there's the message. Here's the secret recipe. So it's being sent to this buddy. So our answer is this guy right here. Oops, <laughs> text, one. I forget which part to copy here, just the value. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. So that's the name of the AIM buddy. What was the first comment in the captured AIM conversation? Well, this one. Here's the secret recipe. So I can grab that out by just going here. And technically that's part of it right there. There we go. It's just a... In fact, yeah, that's just part of the HTML markup. So there you go. There it is. And what is the name of the file and transferred? Well, we already saw that. It was recipe.docx. All right, and then it says, what is the magic number? We know this magic number as file signature. So file signature, if you remember, I think session one, I said that file signature and magic number are basically the same thing. So what's the magic number of the file you want to extract, the first four bytes? Well, this goes back to not this conversation, but the Oscar file transfer. So we get out of that. And we I've already saved the stream, so let's just go look at it. All right, remember I called it recipe.bin? And we're going to open this with bless, which is just the hex editor that I like. And dum 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 dum. And what? What are we doing? And looks. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So we see we have recipe.docx. Now here's the deal. When you see dot docx, you can just do this. Dot, whoops. dot doc x file signature. Oh, hey, look, Gary Kessler's site. If you haven't picked up on the fact that I'm in love with this man, <laughs> freaking love this site. All right, dot doc x. 
Microsoft switched to an open XML format starting with Word 2000, well, excuse me, Office 2007 Plus. If you use any utilities for like malware analysis, such as Mal Office or Office Mal Scanner, you can use the inflate option with that tool and, and pop some of these things out. Or, for that matter, it literally is just a zip. See? PK for a zip file. Anyways, our magic number is that right there. Okay, we'll copy the whole signature. There we go. Copy that. And that's the magic number right there. How do we know that's the magic number? Because that's the magic number for... Let's make everything size 20. This is bothering me. Hey. That didn't work. No, oh, whatever. No, it did. Okay, we're good. All right, the first four bytes, that guy right there. Yay. Yay. All right. So we want to go carve that out. Well, we have the hex editor open, so what we do is we search for these bytes. Let's just search for this part here. Copy that. Go over here. Do Control-F. Search for as hexadecimal and go. Hey, there it is. And it starts literally right at the letter P in ASCII. So we just take this part right there. We say, go away. And then we go down to the bottom to verify. And yep, that's exactly how these files end. I just, I'm familiar with them. But also, maybe there's a trailer. Hey, look at this. Trailer, look for 54B0506. Oh. There's that. It ends in PK. Oh, there we go. Followed by 18 additional bytes. I was going to say there's more info after that. There it is. So the 18 additional bytes are right there. Yay. All right, so we have our file. Let's save it. What? Oh, yeah, my dumb little error. Let's just save it to the freaking desktop. Recipe.docx. Save it. Close it. You go away. You go away. You go away. Double click. We have LibreOffice. Hey, there's our recipe. Check it out. Uh, hold on. That wasn't the question. That wasn't the next question. What was the MD5 sum of the file is the question. So let's do that. Let's go where... md5 sum, recipe.docx, bam. All right, so we got our md5 hash to show the integrity of the file. And then finally, what is the secret recipe? And, well, I already jumped the gun. I've already opened the file. And there it is. Bam. Recipe for disaster. One serving. Ingredients. Four cups of sugar, two cups of water. In a medium saucepan, bring the water to a boil. Then add sugar. Stir gently over low heat until sugar is fully dissolved. Remove the saucepan from the heat. Allow to cool completely. Pour into gas tank. Repeat as necessary. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's some crazy intellectual property going on there. So, yeah, hopefully this is not your company's intellectual property. Hopefully you have something different. But there we go. That's the secret recipe. Did I copy that? No, I didn't. And we're on the desktop. Double-click again. Copy. Paste. There it is. We're done. That's challenge one. Cool. All right. Who's on chat? Yeah, it's got Patrick on there. If you have any questions, man, just throw it up in chat. I'll address it. So let me do a quick review. Let me just talk a little bit, basically. All right. We're about to go into challenge two, or puzzle two that they created, but I just want to say that what we did right now is notice I didn't just jump into the PCAP. Okay, if you recall, the first thing I did is I took the information provided to me and I took the information that I can find based on that initial information into account before I even touched the packet capture, meaning I knew this was going to involve AOL Instant Messenger, so we go Google AIM. We know it's going to involve AIM and Wireshark, I should say, so we found that link. We then got the example packet capture and we opened it. And even the example packet capture they give us, we see the port 5190, but it wasn't being decoded as AOL Instant Messenger. That's cute. So Wireshark works when you tell it to work. So you right click, decode as, and that's how we got it. 
Now, our traffic was being kind of hidden as SSL traffic. Just got your message now. A little bit of delay there. So we just found it and right-clicked, and, and there it was. There were only a few streams in that file anyway. We could have just gone through the TCP streams individually, and we would have found it. Or technically, we could have just gone one stream up from the Oscar file transfer, which is how I found it the first time I did it, and we would have found it. To give you an example of what I mean by that, let me share my screen out, and then we'll move on to puzzle number two. All right, and evidence. Okay, so check it out. Oh, that's already decoded. Let's go. Let's go away from that. Go away. And da, 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 da. there we go. All right, now in here, remember we found the 5190, and then we did the right-click TCP stream. Notice this is TCP stream five. We're doing a file transfer, right? So let's just go to TCP stream four. What's this? Don't care. That's not it. <laughs> All right, so you just keep pulling back. What's this? Is this able instant messenger stuff? No, because it's plain text. That's not it. Go another one back. What's this? Oh, this is SSL. This must not be it. Oh, yeah, it is. And that's when we did our decode as AIM apply. Okay. And then remember, when you go to follow the stream, you're still just going to see the TCP stream. So this is not going to put it into direct context. But what will put it into direct context is using this middle window and looking at the incoming message. Well, at the AOL instant message in here, we see an incoming message from the buddy. There's the buddy name. And then here's the information here. And here's here we have in TLV message block, value message, and then message. HTML based message. Thanks, dude. There it is. Okay, cool. So, done with number one. All right, let's make a folder for puzzle. Okay, let's go take a look. So, we still have over an hour left, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I always have to empty the trash. I even had to interrupt myself. I can't have a trash that's full. It just can't happen, okay? <laughs> okay. Anyways, we're going to go over challenges. That's what we're doing here. So session six and yeah, puzzle two. All right. Well, let's see what we have. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even go over the answers. I just assumed those were the correct answers. So let's back it up and then go to answers and winners. Sorry. Da, 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 da. All right, answers. We found that. We found that. I cut that out, but it, there was that little thing at the end. Name of the file, recipe.x. There's our magic number that we found. There it is right there. MD5 of the file. It starts at 835 and ends in E81. Is that what we got? Yep. Correct MD5, so we know we found the exact file, and then the recipe, well, it's obvious we have that. Okay, so I already knew those were the answers, so, but they provided the answers after the challenge, and that's what we're looking at now. Okay, cool. Now, we're going to go to puzzle number two, and Skip's Bail. Now, I looked at this challenge, but I don't remember if I've ever gone through it. I couldn't even tell you. After being released on bail, Ander, <laughs> Dirk Cooper disappears. Fortunately, investigators were carefully monitoring her network activity before she skipped town. We believe Anne may have communicated with her secret lover, Mr. X, before she left, says the police chief. The packet capture may contain clues to her whereabouts. All right, looks like we're going to be the digital forensic investigator once again. Puzzle 2, save the PCAP. Your mission is to figure out what Anne emailed, where she went, and recover evidence including. Okay, so we take this, copy that. And we're down here in, uh, what's, this, what's this one called? Oh, and skips down. Paste that. Size 20. All right, all right, all right. And uh, something to know here is that her lover's name is Mr. X. So is there a space there or not? Yes. So be careful for that for string searches. If it's Mr. period X with no space, that would not find, you would not find that with Mr period space x. So just making sure that it's how I thought it was. And left town, disappears, skip down, released on bail. So keywords, you might want to use keywords for like bail and all that. 
So we may have to create a keyword list. Let's, let's find out, though. Okay, a couple things we have here. We need her email address, her email password. Looks like she's going to log into some clear text email platform or service. I would assume post office protocol pot three, but who knows? And secret lover's email. What two items did she tell her secret lover to bring? What's the name of the attachment she sent to her lover? What's the MD5 of that attachment? In what city and country is there a rendezvous point? And what is the MD5 sum of the image embedded in the document? So she sends a document. Which, oh, so these two involve a document. It probably has an image. And they want us to extract the image. Okay. Cool. Let's take a look. What are you? Okay. And you? We'll save you. Okay. All right. All right. We're good. No extra open windows. <laughs> Evidence to PCAP. Go. All righty. And I'm just scrolling. Oh, scrolling. Oh, wait a minute. SNTP. I saw that right away. So, okay. If we want to look at email stuff, it's not as simple as just typing in email. Right? There's no filter for email. That'd be nice. But two of the most common protocols you're going to see for email are the post office protocol and the simple mail transfer protocol. So if we just go to statistics protocol hierarchy, we see SMTP traffic. In fact, 43% of the traffic here, 247 packets out of a total of 572 packets, is SMTP traffic. So right here, I know that we want to look at this. Right click, apply as filter, selected. We've done this before. I do that, and this is a clear text authentication occurring to a mail server. So the EHLO, that's part of how mail server works. In fact, if you Google EHLO mail, you'll find right here, well, wait, right? Yeah, it's hello, except the server's response text provides computer readable information about the server's abilities. Oh, good. So, meaning we're going to see a bunch of clear text stuff. Using hello. I also like it because it sounds like hello. Okay, let's go back. Where were we? Are we filtered? Yes. And we right click on the first one and check it out. Clear text. All right, I like clear text. So our mail server, uh, using an AOL server, and do the hello, and laptop. OK, so let's keep this in our notes. We've got, and laptop's showing up there. And we try to do auth plane chunking binary auth login. All right, so the client provides auth login, and the server provides this, OK? The client provides that. The server provides this. The client provides that. And then it looks like we're setting up email. So at this point, we're setting email from and setting it to. OK. Well, the first thing I want to do is find out, what is it, her email, right? OK. What is her email address? Well, her email address, so this is a username and a password. She's trying to authenticate. And this is occurring via base64. How do I know that? Well, I know that it's common for this to happen with SMTP, but I also see the equal sign terminating this string, which gives me a pretty big heads up. That's what's going on. So we're going to want to convert these values here. So let's pop into Python. Convert base64, base64.b64 decode. And then the first value goes in here. Actually, will it, will it work this way? What if it works this way? No. Well, first off, that's not going to work. Okay. You know what I just did there. Don't do that. <laughs> first part, though. Yeah. So the server's asking for the username. Is the first thing, the VX stuff. Okay. And then, so this is going to be the username. This is going to be her email address, which, by the way, it's probably going to be that right there. But let's just make sure. She might be sending it from a different address. All right. We go to this guy. We get rid of you. Paste that in there. Yep, there it is. 
Oh, we found her email address. She is authenticating to the AOL server using this. And let's go over here. What is her email address? That. All right. Number two, what's her password? Well, we are about to find her password right now. So this is going to be the, the server asking for password. I'm just going to verify it because you never know. You always want to verify things. Don't make assumptions, especially in the world of forensics. Yeah, so it's prompting for a password. That means this is a simple base64 encoded password. Real secure, huh? You'd be amazed, by the way, how many corporations use this. But moving on. There we go. That's your password. 558 five, rules. It even looks like a password. Okay, go over here. There we go. All right. What is Anne's secret lover's email address? Okay, let's take a look. Uh, we're making an email, and here's the plain text email. Awesome. Okay, from Anne to, well, it looks like sec558 at gmail.com. And lunch next week. Lovers often have lunch together. She's using Outlook Express, by the way. That's something that might come up later, might not. I don't know. And she's saying, sorry, I can't do lunch next week. Heading out of town another time. All right. Well, maybe that's her lover's email. So for right now, I don't see anything specifically that says there's a connection. But we have an email address. But that's not concrete to me. So what else do we have in here? Okay. This ends this particular communication. This communication was in TCP stream 0. What's in stream 1? Oh, look at that. Stream 1 has more stuff. Let's see what this is. Ah, here we go. Same username and password. Same device. Same login, but look at this. Receipt to MrSecretX at AOL.com. So this must be... Ah, yeah, here we go. This is it. Okay. So the subject is rendezvous. All right, so this is our guy, Mr. Secret X. Very secret email address. So ignore that one. That is not the answer. This is. Okay, what two items did Anne tell her secret lover to bring? Well, we have an email. Again, Outlook Express, rendezvous. Multi-part MIME encoded. We may have to do some decoding here. Well, not for the first part. Hey, sweetheart, bring your fake passport and a bathing suit. The address is attached. Love, Anne. Okay, so there are the two things. Fake passport and a bathing suit. There we go. What is the name of the attachment that she sent to her lover? Well, it's probably right below it. And then here, this is just the HTML version. So the MIME type includes the plain text, see? Content text plain, and then the HTML version. If the email client supports HTML, it's the exact same thing. But now, there we go, the next MIME type, or MIME part, I should say, is a file. It's called secretrendezvous.docx. It's encoded in base64. So what was the question again? What's the name of the attachment? Oh, cool. This is the name of the attachment right here. Secretrendezvous.docx. Sounds like what we'd be looking for. There we go. All right, what is the MD5 sum of the attachment? Well, that tells me that we need to get this attachment. So base64 encoded. Oh, wait, what's going on there? I just saw... Uh... Oh, no, I didn't. It's just wires are blipping while I'm scrolling too fast. Yeah, so this is a big file in here. Now let's try to cheat real quick. Actually, hold on. Let's not cheat. Let's first do it the right way. Here's one side, right? And then the other side here. We're going to save this guy because that's where we have our file. So let's save this as... Uh, what is it again? We'll just call it secret. What was it? Oh, a docx. Well, for right now, it's a binary file. It's just nothing. So we'll save it as secret.bin. And let's see if we can cheat. So this is it. Oh, by the way, this is all on TCP stream one. There we go. Right, 
hint toward us, and our device name. Okay. And what was I going to do? We're going to try to cheat to get this attachment out. All right. We go into the PCAP, and we go to File, Export Objects. Oh, yeah, this is SMTP. So, yeah, it's not going to have it there, duh. Yeah, no, SMTP is not a standard export object. Okay, that's fine. So what we're going to do in that case is we're going to carve this sucker out. Now, yes, I could use, if you're wondering, like, hey, couldn't we use a... In fact, I'll leave this window for later. Couldn't we use Network Miner? Yeah, we could do that, but that, that sucks. That's cheating. That's not fun. Let's do it the fun way. So we have our secret bin. Open it with a hex editor. Take a look at it. Now we have all the email information. And then eventually... Dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right, here's our MIME type. The next part in the MIME encoding, right? It's an octet stream, which is what you're going to find. This, by the way, pay attention to this content type application octet stream. You're going to see this for most embedded files that come down in a uh, well in the stream. Okay, and then we have our name. Transfer encoding is base64. File name, and then look right here. Remember, we went over this. O D O A, O D O A, right? What is that? Those are two empty lines. This is the beginning of our base64 data. So two lines, base64 data. Okay, now I want to take this part, right? And I want to toss it. So we're getting rid of all the stuff. Oh, whoops! I didn't go high enough here. And don't forget, we're also taking out the two empty lines. Carriage return, line feed, carriage return, line feed. So okay, delete it. And then we have our base64 stuff. And then at the end of it, ah, we need to get rid of this too. All right, all the way up to A, 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 A. Bam, now we have O, D, O, A, O, D, O, A. And then the end of the mime parts, so we need to get rid of that also. And then we save it. Okay. Do over. And what is this again? Okay. Secret2.bin. Can I save it in the same directory? Can. That's just a weird thing going on. All right. You go away. Actually, no. We'll work with this. That's the original. And this is the one that we have now. And if I open this with the hex editor, just to verify, this is the start well, let's verify. UESD. We go look over here. And TCP stream one. Go and follow. And starts, yeah. UESD. And what does that end in? It ends in D followed by four A's. Let's make sure that's what we have at the end. D followed by four A's. Cool. All right. Now let's actually name this properly. So we have secret dot base64 because that's what it is. Now, for base64 decoding, what we were doing thus far is we're using Python. In fact, I have the window open here, right? We're doing base64 decode. I don't want to put that entire string in there, and I also don't want to write a Python script right now to read the contents of the entire file, although it wouldn't be very difficult to be honest. We might do that after I finish the, the easier way to do it. But almost all versions, well, I can't say that at all, but many versions of Linux come with a very handy tool called, wait for it, Base64. Check it out. Wait, man, Base64. Hey, Base64 encode, decode data, and print a standard output. What? Yeah, it'll just do it for us. Get out of here. So... Base64, option, D for decode, and then the file. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And it's going to put the output onto the standard output. So standard out, meaning you're going to have to pipe it to a file if we want it to be in a file, which is what we're going to want. So we go base64-decode, and then the file, secret.base64, and then we send this to secret.docx because we are going to have a result. And we hit enter. Invalid input. What? Get out of here. I'll do it again. 
<laughs> I always like to do that. It's not going to change, but I just like to do it. What do you mean, invalid input? I'll do the same thing again. <laughs> All right, that's just my thing. Moving on. What do you mean, invalid input? Secret.base64 is base64, so you stop it. I must have done something wrong, obviously. Let's open up. Do we have a hex editor open? No, okay, let's open up secret base64. Find out what I did wrong. Base 64 to me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, this isn't even word wrapping. Hold on. No, I got it. Here's what happened. Uh, open with. Oh, come on. There. Check it out. See these right here? That's what happened. Ah, O D O A, O D O A, O D O A. The way that Wireshark presents this information to us is like this. Fixed width lines. See that? These fixed width lines literally have the character turn line feed following them. And as such, see all these right here? Yeah, when I save that sucker, it saved them. Now, what I could do is I could do a find and replace... Oh, look, it even has it right here. ODOA and replace it with nothing. And I could replace all. Done. Replace 3,639 of those bad boys. All right, so this is one way to do it. And I'm going to show you another way, though. So secret. Uh, we're going to call it fixed. Base64. Now, another way to do this is to use regular expressions, uh, specifically Perl. So I'm going to exit it. Well, excuse me. I'm going to use Perl right now just because I like using it. Another way would be to use said, but whatever. So we had, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, we're not even in the folder here. Six. Oh, I'm going to puzzle two. And then, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, Perl, N-E, and then we're going to print that. And our file is going to be da, 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 secret dot b64. Four. Our said goes here, globally replace. All right, this is regular expression being done and just using Perl to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an or here, and I'm going to replace R or N. Whenever I find it, and replace it with nothing. I could replace it with some spaces, or I could replace it with the word happy or whatever the hell. And I do that and go, there we go. And it just took out all the spaces so I can send that. Look what it does there. There we go. I can send this to an output of secret dash fixed two dot b64. Okay. And what that does? Let me show you here. Let me zoom in. Eh, zoom in more. Again. Yeah. All right. What I did here, this command right here. So we're just going to run Perl, and we're going to use it to run this Perl script. So this script is a regular expression, and then print the result. And then our input file is our secret.base64, and I output to secret fixed to base64. So what does this do? Well, this right here is the portion of, I'm not going to go too far into regular expressions because that steps outside our course, but since a lot of you are programmers or in a programming program, you should be familiar with the regex. I think I've discussed it before. I don't even remember now. So I'm going to say, take out the return or the new line. If you find it, wherever you find it, because I'm throwing a global identifier here, and this section is what you replace it with. So if you're going to be doing any type of digital forensics, or for that matter, if you're going to work in security, you need to learn about regular expressions. There's a Wikipedia article, which actually is not the greatest. The best way to learn about regular expressions is to just Google the hell out of it and just look for stuff. But I will say that if you want to become a master of stream editing, this text here set an awk pocket reference. I have that at work. It's a fantastic little guy. And if you want to learn a lot, like actually learn pocket references, you know, it's a pocket reference. It's a very small book. I don't know how many pages, like 40 or something. Silly. It's really small. They used, see there, get it for five or six. Actually, you might as well just buy the one with free shipping. Sorry, anyways. 
This guy here is said in, op in a nutshell. This guy goes over how to use the stream editor and how to use awk. And these bad boys are versatile as heck. You don't need to read this entire thing. There's also a text on grep. But what you really want to read at some point is this guy. Mastering regular expressions. I have it. Of course I have it. Why wouldn't I have it? <laughs> of course I have this. So I have every, every book ever. I love these books. They're still amazing. So this book here. We'll learn you up on it. At work, we use it often, in fact, nearly every day for something. So regular expressions are very important. Enough of that. Okay, so there's two ways to do it. There are many ways to do this. What we want to do is just replace the ODOA. So I used a hex header to do it, and I also used a what? A regular expressions through Perl. Now let's open both of these. There we go, single line, and then let's open this one. There we go, single line. Cool. All right, they're both, well, are they both the exact same? They should be. They are. Ah, here's how you can tell if you have the exact same results. So we run md5sum on the version that we did in the hex editor. There's our md5. And we did an md5sum on the version that we used the regular expression for, and we got the same thing. So we did a find replace on ODOA, which is when we replaced it with nothing, which is the same thing that this regex statement right here does. Cool. So th those are both going to work for us. So now what we want to do is base64 dash d for decode, and then our input file. How it was. Ah, I already forgot. It's been like 10 seconds, right? Okay. Oops. D64.d, secret.fix.base64. And this is going to print. I don't want to print. I want to do this. Uh, Secret.docx. It worked. Yay! All right, let's not put it to a file. Let's just have it go to less. There we go. We see it starts off with PK. That means we have a docx file. Awesome. So we have decoded this bad boy. And I can go down and less, but less is definitely not what you want to use. In fact, sorry for that. <laughs> sorry about that. Ignore that on the video when you watch that. You're like, dude, what are you doing? So we have our file now. Let's go take a look at our file. Secret.docx. Wait, first thing we should do, md5 sum that bad boy. It's good for our notes. Cool. And, oh, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. All right, well, so there we go. Good. <laughs> sure. I forgot that's what we were doing. So there's the md5. All right. In what city and country is a rendezvous point? Well, I would have to assume that's going to be in the file. So we open it. Yep. Meet me at the fountain near the... Oh, let me zoom in for you. Sorry. Here you go. All right. Meet me at the fountain near the rendezvous point. Address below. I'm bringing all the cash. Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Mexico. Cool. So... Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Meet me at the Playa del Mexico. All right, cool. Wait, city and country. Yeah, we're good. Okay, and then finally, what is the MD5 sum of the image embedded in the document? This one? Oh, okay. There's a couple ways to do this. Now, watch. I'm going to do it the silly way, okay? Here's the silly way. I right-click and I save the graphic. Workshop. Session 6. Puzzle 2. Silly. PNG. Right, that's a silly way of doing it. A better way of doing it. We just want that raw image out. If you remember, I noted that... There we go. Microsoft Word files ever since 2007... Oh, excuse me, Office files since 2007 and above have literally been zip files. And for that matter, if I open this sucker, oh, come on. 
in a text, uh, no, excuse me, in a hex editor. See that magic number right there, right? Yeah, that's for a docx file, but you know what, you know what else it's for? It's for a zip file because that's what it is. So we can scroll to the very bottom of these, by the way, and see what files are in them. These are all the files that are compressed. So we just do a right click. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I don't have a hand. <clears throat> excuse me, a handler for that in this version of Linux. So let's just force the force the fact here. Let's do a copy of it to be safe, and then we'll just rename the darn thing .zip, and now we have a handler for it. No application for zip. I don't have a zip thing on here. Are you kidding me? Shut up. Yeah, I have unzip. You stop it. All right. Hold on. Unzip. Uh, let's. New folder, um, let's call it secret, secret zip. All right, nope. go over there. No. Okay, cool. So we're in this folder now, and let's just do unzip. What's it called? Secret. There we go. Yeah, I unzipped it that way. Okay, so what did I just do? Let's let's go a little slower on what just happened here. So I don't have. A, a good zip handler for some reason, but unzip is on this machine. If you just do a man unzip, you get this guy right here. Unzip, list, test, and or extract compressed files in a zip archive. Cool. Now the generic way to, there's a big long man page, you can scroll down and show you all kinds of cool options and pathing and directory structures and oh yeah, yeah whatever. The ghetto way to use it is just to literally run unzip and then the name of the zip file. So that's what I did. And it provides the files that are inside the zip file. Now remember, what is this zip file really? This zip file is a Word file. I told you, Microsoft Office files, 2007 and up, they are literally just zip files. So one of the things I see in here is this guy, image1.png. Let's go see if we got it. Where to put it? Media, there it is, image1.png. Cool. All right, I'm going to move this around. You go away, you go away, and you go away. Come on, everyone go away. Copy this out here, back up, and put it right there. Change my view to detailed. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. I thought I was the wrong version of KDE there. Okay. And here we go. So we have image1.png, and we have silly.png. Okay, let's see if they're the same file. All right, where are we? Put it out. LSL, MD5, sum, silly, MD5, sum, image. Same file. So the technical name is this. So we'll take this and we'll put that right there. And we're done. Now, are we done? Well, I don't know. We got to go find out. Okay, let's go find out. Puzzle number two. Back it up. And what am I doing here? Yeah, no, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to go forward. Dun, 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 dun. No, I'm failing. Hold on. All right. Answers. Okay. What's Ann's email address? Sneaky. Got it. Password, 558 rules, got it. Lover's email, Mr. Secret X at AOL, got it. Who to bring? A fake passport and a bathing suit, got it. Name of the attachment, secret rendezvous.docx, got it. MD5 sum of the attachment, well, I think this was it. It begins in 9E and ends in 2-3. 9E, 2-3, yep, got it. Where are they meeting? Got it. And MD5, I think I remember seeing this. It begins in AAD and ends in 0B7. And got it. Okay. There's puzzle number two. Cool. All right. And again, I said we're going to spend this whole time going over these challenges. I want to make another comment here that you have these available to you, obviously. And don't forget you have the answers available. Now, Here's some things I don't like. I don't like playing video games 
with codes that give me extra lives, except for Contra. I mean, that's stupid. You have to have the 30 lives in Contra, right? My point is, when I first started playing Doom, if you guys remember from ID Software, when I started playing Doom, there was a code, IDDQDFD, I think it was, or something close to that. I'm surprised I remember that. I'm pretty sure that was it. It's called God Mode. It gave you all the weapons, all the ammunition, and I think it might have given you invincibility or it's just extremely high level of life, something like that. As soon as I found that code, I ran through the game, and it became really, really boring. And it became boring because you just went around and blew stuff up. There was no skill required. When you go through these type of things, if you literally just walk through every single one of them, you're just walking through, and you're just repeating someone else's work. Real learning, real kinesthetic learning requires trial and failure. So trial and error is what I'm trying to say. It, re it requires failure. You need to go through these and make mistakes. So like in the last video, I cut out, was it 11 minutes, of me making a mistake. We make mistakes all the time in the security field. It's, it's a learning point. It's a jump-off point. So go through puzzle one. Go through puzzle two. Yeah, I'm covering these with you, but you know what? When you're going through it hands-on, don't bring up my notes. See how much you remember. See how much you can find on your own. Don't use the God code, okay? Don't use the code. Try to go through it. Try to learn as much as you can. Speaking of which, we're going to do that right now. Because I'm pretty darn sure I've never done Puzzle 3 and Apple TV. I also don't know diddly about Apple TV. I don't know diddly. So here we go. How much time do we have? We have 35 minutes. Let's see if I can complete this. Actually, this one looks pretty easy. Well, who knows what they have in store for us. Okay. Anne and Mr. X have set up their new base of operations. While waiting for the extradition paperwork to go through, you and your team of investigators covertly monitor her traffic. Recently, Anne got a brand new Apple TV and gave it a static IP address. And for some reason, we have the IP address. Okay. It's on a private network. It ends in 1.10. Cool. And then here's a packet capture. All right. I can tell where this is going. We're going to do some network forensics for an Apple TV. I don't, I don't think I've done that. In fact, the bonus round for the 2014 challenge that we won has to do with Apple TV stuff, but we were not able to crack it because it literally requires technology that does not yet exist, basically decrypting FaceTime traffic. So LMG is providing – oh, no, it's not an Apple TV. It's a, a Fire TV, Amazon's thing. Yeah, so that's fairly similar. Okay, anyways, so you're the investigator, obviously, and do some stuff. Okay. Copy. Here we go. And this is... And... Oh, what? Oh, come on. TV. Paste it in. Set this all to 20. Ah. I like that. Okay. There you go. All right, we need to find the MAC address of the Apple TV, the user agent string of the Apple TV. Th these, those two should be really easy. I, I mean, I don't see how they would... Yeah. What were Ann's first four search terms on the Apple TV? All incremental searches count. What the heck is an incremental search? I have an idea. But you know what ideas are worth in the forensics realm? Well, actually, that's a lie. Ideas are worth a lot. But what I'm getting at is don't just go off of ideas. So incremental search. Oops. An extra E on there. Oh, whatever. It found it. Oh, look, a Wikipedia page. Yay. <laughs> Freaking love Wikipedia. All right. In computing, incremental search, incremental find, or real-time suggestions. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. That's what it is. Real-time suggestions, user interface. Okay, so here's what it is. You know when you're in Google? and you start typing, and as you're typing, every letter that you type, it provides results to you, that's what incremental searching is. So if she's on an Apple TV and she's searching for something, I guess it has a browser built in or, or something. I don't, I, I don't know if Apple TV has a browser. I don't think they do. AirWeb, web browser for Apple TV. Well, there we go. It does have one. So maybe she's using that or something? I don't know. Let's see, does my Google version here have incremental search enabled? Yes. So I type B, and it gives me some options. I type O, it gives me some options. It's pulling these 
from the internet, by the way. So I type in bodybuilding. I like bodybuilding. I don't do it, but I like it. I like to pretend I do it. <laughs> I think we all do, right? Bodybuilding, and I type D, diet plan, diet. See all these things that are popping up. This is incremental searching. See this right here? I already have results. So that means my browser is doing a get request every time I hit a letter, even if I hit space. See? I just got more results back from Google, even though I don't have them down here. I got these up here. Okay? So that's that's involved. Incremental searches are involved in some way, shape, or form. All right. Uh, next up, the title of the first movie she clicked on. All right. Full URL to the movie trailer, and then we have a keyword here, defined by preview-url. Okay, I don't know what type of string that's going to be, if it's going to be in an XML object or a JSON query or freaking, I don't know, uh, or JSON response is what I meant. What was the title of the second movie? Okay, so she's going to open some movies and get data back, and we have to parse that. And the price to buy the second movie, which I'm guessing this is going to be XML stuff because the Internet's all XML now. What was the last full term and searched for? Okay. So first up, MAC address of the Apple TV. Let's do it. All these windows. You guys go away. I don't want you anymore. I'm done with you. I'm done with you too. And you too, Gary. I'm done with you too. All right, pop out of puzzle two, puzzle three, and there's our PCAP. Open it up. Okay, what do I want to do? Apple TV. Ah, oh, that should be easy. Statistics, end points, meaning devices that are in this packet capture. Wow, that was easy. All right, so check it out. We have three different, well, technically we have two different MAC addresses here. This is IP version 4 multicasting, so that doesn't count. So this guy right here is just a multicast address. does not count. We have two MAC addresses, and if we do name resolution, one's a Cisco and one's an Apple device. So if I just look at this Apple device right there, see that guy? This is the MAC address of her Apple device. So, can I, no, I can't do it. Well, here, let's filter on it and then copy it. There we go. All right, what's the MAC address of our Apple TV? That's it. Next up, what user agent string did her Apple TV use in HTTP requests? Well, this guy right here is going to be the kicker. We're going to combine it with that guy right there. So we're going to do some Wireshark filtering fun. So we want that address and HTTP.request. Apply. Okay, now again, what we just did is this. Okay, now what is this doing? This is saying I only want traffic from for Apple TV. And then this right here is an and. There we go. I only want HTTP requests. So an HTTP request can be a get or a post request. And what we're looking for is the user agent string that's used in these requests. And over on the right, we see a bunch of requests. In fact, look right here. Web objects, mz search dot, whoa! Incremental search, media, movie, query equals h. Okay. Uh, ah, incremental search, media, movie, query equals h, a. This looks like an incremental search. Wait, hell, where'd it go? H. H A H A C. So those are her incremental searches. Well, I'm jumping ahead, so I just found that cool. But I already forgot what we're doing. I got I got carried away. Sorry. Oh, her user agent string. Well, that's easy. We'll just grab one of these requests, do a right click follow stream, and our answer should be right up top. Okay, we're gonna do a git. And there it is. Our user agent string is Apple TV slash 2.4. There we go. That's it. Okay. There we are. Okay. Find streams. That. And all right. That's our answer here. There we go. Okay. Cool. And then I already kind of cheated on this part because I already saw it. What were Ann's first 
four searches on the Apple TV incremental searches count. Okay, go away. Go back to our filter for just Apple TV traffic that's a request. These are all get requests, by the way. There's no post request in here. These are all get. We can verify that. Wait. No. Is it that type? Oh, method. Yeah, sorry. Blanking out there. Post. Nothing. Get, however. Yeah, so those are all gets. So I'll just leave that filter on. Actually, no, I don't want to... Just in case... I just don't want to filter out too much on accident. Okay, so we're looking for incremental searches, and we can just look at the info section here to find this. Let's move in info over to the front and make it longer. Oh, yeah, check it out. Cool. So the first, so what I've just done is I moved info, the column, to the front, and then I expanded it. So my other stuff's over here. I don't even care about the other stuff because I know I'm filtering on Apple TV traffic for Git requests, so I'm just looking at her Git requests now. So, okay, we're dealing with incremental searches. So I've done that in Google. I showed you that. We're going to, she hits a view grouping, ID 39. So this must be like a type of content on the Apple TV so I don't know exactly what Apple TVs are capable of doing, but it says she's doing movie stuff. So I guess they do movies on demand, I would assume. And here we're doing a page name. Okay, United States movies. Um, Apple, Apple, Apple main, iTunes, Apple, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to scroll down here. Actually, let's just take a look at this. All right. And view grouping. Yeah, so we're looking at a particular category of movies. Category 33, it looks like, of movies. Whatever that means. Which, oh, wait, 39? Well, whatever, we're looking at movies. All right, and then we have an incremental search. And here you go. So incremental search, and then we start providing parameters. Media is a movie, so she's searching movies. And her first, Q equals is almost always a, a get request for the query that you're providing to a particular type that's for when it has a generic type and this does. So this I guess is like the movie name or she could be searching director or actor or actress, I don't know. But we have an H and then the next incremental search is here and we have HA and by the way look she typed H and then all of a sudden she gets a bunch of Git requests. So what are these right here? This must be yeah, this, is, this must be the incremental search results. So she's in the Apple, what's it called, ITV? It's just Apple TV. Shouldn't they have called it ITV? Everything else is freaking I. Right, okay. So she types H, and then it provides these pictures, these JPEGs, and look, they're 170 by 170, which makes me think they're thumbnails. They're small pictures, which makes sense. She probably has it up on her TV, and she types H, and it gives the first results for H. And then she types an A. And then she gets more results. And then she types a C. And then she gets more results. Uh, I knew it was going here. And then she types a K for hack. I bet she was looking for hackers. Pretty darn sure she's looking for hackers. She better be searching for hackers. So our question was, what were her first four search terms? H, A, C, K. Those are the first four search terms. Because all incremental searches count. Cool. What was the title of the first movie that she clicked on? Uh, oh, well, that's easy also. So, looks like this one's different. Oh, view movie. There it is. All right, so she does a get request for this movie right here. And then something about a storefront, related items. Oh, this is... Trying to show other stuff. And then, boom, movie page, U.S. Hackers, Ian Softly. What's this? Oh, I think this just means, like, United States. Wait, is this a movie about a hacker named Ian Softly? No, it's just the movie Hackers, right? Who the heck is Ian Softly? I'm assuming this is an actor from Hackers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's our guy. 
Yeah, he's in the movie. And if you didn't know that, you fail. <laughs> you fail this workshop. I'm going to call your dean of students and be like, oh, my God, they fail. <laughs> you need to watch Hackers if you have not seen it yet. Oh, it's amazing. Well, I mean, it's amazingly stupid, but all right. No, seriously, if you have not seen Hackers, you, you need to go see Hackers. So that's him. What's his name? Crash Override? In the... Is he Crash Override? Oh, I'm failing now. Well, whatever. So he's looking for this movie. Let's try to replicate. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's try to replicate something here. He's going to metrics.apple.com. No, excuse me, she. We're doing a she here. Uh, first name, hackers. Uh, let's go here. And then let's see if this link is still live. I doubt it, but you know what? It can't hurt to check, right? Oh, wait. This is just a metric page. That's not what we want. What? No, back out of this. Back. That's not what we want. That's not going to probably give us anything. And again, maybe it will. I don't know. Let's, let's see if there's anything returned from this. It's just a metric page. This isn't what we want. Yeah, it's just a graphic. It's used for metric gathering. So, But that did exist. It's just returning metadata to them. That's not what we want. That's not going to help us at all. Okay, do over. Hackers, you go away. Okay, where are we... Oh, here, here we go. No. Yeah, there we go. There's the movie ID. Okay, let's see if this is still live. So we're going to take ax.itunes.apple. I'm not familiar with that. I'm assuming that has to do with the iTunes or whatever the heck. So we go like this and like that. Here's the get request. This is what it was for. Let's go see if this is still live. That'd be cool if it's still live. Yeah, there it is. It's still live. Hackers. Yay. <laughs> that was fun. Ignore that. It's an awesome movie. Okay, so cool. This is what she looked at on the Apple TV. However, that shows movie stuff. Okay. All right. So the title was Hackers, and I, heck, I'll even leave this in the notes. Uh, this is the... Uh, um, let's see, movie page from Apple TV. What was the full URL to the movie trailer? Oh. Uh. Hmm. Well, it's probably on this page. Follow straight. Mm -hmm. What do we have decoded? Get web objects. Mm hmm. Hmm. And go back. So. Hmm. How about that? Uh, er. Pretty sure there should be some XML in here that I'm just failing to see. Okay, so let's let's do this. Movie page is here. Related items is here. Page name, but this is just metric stuff. I would assume it's here. No? Response in frame 3121. Oh, that's because we're filtering it out. Ah, you stupid. Duh. <laughs> Whatever. All right, uh, I want to go to frame 3121. Clear that. Bring this over. 3121, huh? What? It's not 3121. Did I just make that up? I think I did. Dang it, Ryan. Okay, response where? Oh, 312. Yeah, I saw the bracket. Okay, whatever. Uh, frame 312. Clear that. Frame 312. Oh, yeah, here's our 200 response. Okay. Follow stream. Well, maybe this has XML attached. Oh, good, it does. Yay. 
All right, check it out. So our, our response to the Git request, I was filtering out the response. That, that's why you have to be careful with filters, all right? So I should know this by now, but I do it every once in a while. I have a filter. I'm looking for the response to the filter, but I'm filtering, or, you know, the Git request, but I'm filtering on just the Git request. So that's not going to help. Okay, our 200 OK, if we do a follow TCP stream, there's nothing in here. Like, what, how does this help? This doesn't help, but check it out. Remember down here? Reassemble TCP, uncompressed entity body. And we take this right here, and this is XML. So, internet's moving to XML at this point. Oh, now we're looking for, okay, look, now there's XML keys. We were given a key, were we not? Full preview URL defined by preview URL. Okay. We'll see a URL here. Oh, what's this? Nope, that's the metrics right there. Metric gathering. What's this guy? URL. That is the URL itself. That's where we are. There's the date of the movie. The uh, genre name is drama. Copyright information. Box art. What's this guy? Box height. That's a picture of the box, most likely. Yeah. Come on. Average rating. Dum, 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 da, dum, da, dum, dum. Wait a minute, this thing's huge. I'm going to scroll through this whole thing? No. What are you doing? All right, what's our string again? I already forgot. Ah, preview URL. Cool. Yeah, find it. It's in, I know it's in here. Find it. Man. <laughs> Dang you. Dang you. Uh, let's do it the right way. Do, 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 do. Export the bytes. And evidence three dot bytes. Save you. Puzzle three. Bytes, open with you. There we go. So here's the XML. I don't know why I didn't just do this. Sorry. I didn't realize how long it was. So here's what I did. We have an XML file, right? Well, here you have frame data down here. Don't care. Reassemble TCP. Okay, that's great. And But here, uncompressed body entity. We wanted to export this, the actual XML itself. So you just go down here. You highlight the extensible markup language, or XML, you right-click, and then you go to Export Selected Packet Bytes. Okay? And what that provided to me is the XML document itself. So now what we want to do is we just, there's a bunch of URLs. So this is much cleaner and easier to read. And we wanted the uh, what preview URL, and there it is right there. So in our dictionary, the key preview URL string is right there. So we'll just take this whole thing right here. This looks kind of odd that we have two dots here, but here's the encoding. It's an M4V container, and this looks like the resolution. Okay, let's save that in our notes since that's the answer. But let's also see if it's live still. Since the video link was live, maybe this will be live. Yeah, it is. Cool. So 8.3 megabytes. All right. I'm not going to watch it. You need to if you haven't seen it, but <laughs> moving on. What was the title of the second movie Anne clicked on? Well, this should be pretty easy since we already have our methodology here. Okay, where are we? Um, there's hackers. And then incremental search S. S-N, when she's looking at sneakers. S-N-E, she's going to look at sneakers. Oh, no. S-N-E-B. Ah, nope, she changed it. She deleted the B and put an A. She's going to do sneakers. Yeah, I knew it. It's going to be sneakers. There it is. <laughs> Classics. Classics. So the movie Sneak... Well, hold on. Let's get the URL straight from this. Okay, so she goes to sneakers. And now we have the get request... This is the, so this is the metric page. This is the one that we want. 
and we look at HTTP and we see that our response is in frame 1186. All right, we clear this. 1186, here's our response. Scroll down, there's the XML for it, and here we go. Export selected packet bytes, and let's just call this sneakers.xml since that's what it is. And then it opened it up. Yay, there it is. All right, now what was our challenge asking? What was the title of this? Oh, okay. Sneakers. Another classic movie. What was the price to buy it? So price-display. Pretty freaking easy. There it is. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, there's multiple prices. Why? Flavors. Oh, different types. Well, there's... Okay, what price do you want then? What was the price to buy it? Well, they can buy it for $9.99 or... This is... What is this, a rent? Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. There it is. Action display name rent. Okay, cool. Action display name buy. Well, they asked buy it. So there's buy. And the price to buy it is $9.99. All right, let's we'll copy the key. And there it is. Okay, and you know what? There are other prices there, though. I'm just kind of interested in what else. I mean, you buy it, you rent it. What's flavors? We need flavors. Standard DQ, ST standard deviation query. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's two sets of buying and renting. The other one's flavors. Why? Why is this? I'm just interested now. Do 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 do. -do. Buy it. Huh. Weird. Well, whatever. Okay. Moving on. What was the last full term she searched for? So not the incremental, but the full term. That should be pretty darn easy. We already have our methodology laid out. So we go back to our filter. Scroll down. Dump, 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 dump. Uh, is this it? This starts it. Okay. I... I K. Oh, it's I know what you did last summer. See? Oh, I'm assuming I K N I K N O I K I know I know you. Yeah, it's gonna be I know what you did last summer. I know you're watching me. Oh, that's <laughs> that is not I know what you did last summer. It's I know you're watching me. <laughs> That's funny. So what was her last search? Wait, did I click the wrong one? What the heck? Oh, it truncated it. Okay. There it is. What was her last search term? I know you're watching me. Okay. Let's see if these are the answers. Pretty sure they are. This one's pretty easy. Wait, I just went to the wrong one. Here we go. This wasn't very difficult. Um, dump, 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 dump. Go back. And and Apple TV answers. All right. Yep. 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 Uh, yep. Sneakers nine nine nine. Now you're watching me. Boom. So there it is. That's puzzle number two. That's how you do it. I think we just took twenty minutes to do that one. Cool.
So we got puzzles one, two, and three done. Awesome. So much time do we have? Well, we only have seven minutes technically, or like what, ten minutes till we hit the two-hour mark. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna push my luck and just see how far I can get quickly into puzzle number four. Why not? Okay, blah, 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 packet catcher. Uh, there we go. Save it. And stuff. Ooh, this one's got... Oh, this one got cool. Oh, man. This one's cool. Look at some scan types. All right. Ooh, it's an in map status, huh? Is he doing in map? What's he do? What's he using? Fugitive in Mexico, Mr. X remotely infiltrates the Arctic Nuclear Fusion Research Facility, lab subnet over the interwebs, virtually inside the building, pivoting through compromised system. He conducts some noisy network reconnaissance. So anyone who's going to pivot through a compromised system should probably not do noisy network reconnaissance, but whatever. Sadly, he's not very stealthy. Well, that's good for us, I guess. All right, we captured all of his traffic, and go find stuff. Okay, so he's doing network reconnaissance. What was the IP address of his scanner? So I'm not going to complete this because I don't want to take too much time in our last session. But what I am going to do is just maybe part one, and for that matter, I might take a look into part two. Okay, so what is the IP address of his scanner? Open it up. Ooh, yeah, that's scanning traffic for sure. Get all these resets back. See these resets? Oh, let me move this back to where it belongs. That work? Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, it's pretty colors. All right, so let's just do this. This is easy. Um, 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 endpoints. Well, based on packets and bytes, I would say that that is the, the MAC address. IPv4, we're, we're finding the IP address, right? The first, well, what was the IP address of the scanner? Yeah, okay, and uh, go back. Well, I would say it's this guy. Let's find out. Yep, looks like it. All the traffic coming from this guy. Well, you know what? Actually, I want to do that. IP source. This. Yeah. So he's going nuts. He's trying to hit all these different things. Silly services. He's using ephemeral ports here. High layer ports. And he's just trying to hit damn near everything under the sun. Typical scan, some type of scan, whether it be a Vuln scan or network mapping. So I'm going to say this is his IP address here. In fact, let's do this. Watch this. Source is not that. Oh, wait. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, like that? Yeah. All right. So I think this is a source because I saw it going outbound to a bunch of stuff. But how do we verify that? We say not source that. And we see couple different IPs shooting back resets to that IP. So that is typical for a scan. Yeah, and this is all going to be a bunch of reset traffic. Look at all that. Yeah, that is definitely his IP address. So that is him. He's doing the scans. Okay. Got a couple more minutes here. Let's see if we can do number two. How many are there? There are six total. Okay. For the first port scan he conducts. What type of port scan was it? Note the scan consisted of many thousands of packets. Pick one. These are different types of scans that you can do. So I'm going to assume he's using nmap, but who knows what he's using. But um, if you're not familiar with the different types of scans, see, does this have a good... Yeah, here you go. So the different types of scans in the scanning world use different techniques. So a SIN scan will send a SIN packet 
as if they're going to open up a real connection. Synac indicates the port is listening if it comes back, otherwise it gets a reset, which by the way, remember all those resets we had? So he might be doing a send attack, but we're not 100% sure yet. We can do following. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't go over the rest of them. There's also a TCP connect scan, which uses a different methodology. UDP scans are on the UDP ports. These are not UDP scans because the first section here, right, starts off all TCP, so it's definitely not a UDP scan. And there's Christmas tree and init scan. Oh, there's a Christmas scan right there. SX, where it has all the damn flags turned on. It has fin push urgent lighting up like a Christmas tree and... Yeah, this, this goes into another section of network forensics, knowing what type of scans are coming your way. So we have a couple minutes. Let's take a look. All right, this first thing that goes out, what is it? It is a sin. These are all sins. See? Sin, 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 sin. What that means, by the way, they, it looks like this is just a typical sin scan. My choices are... One, TCP SYN, TCP ACK. It's not an ACK. It's not a UDP. It is not Christmas tree, and it's not a reset. A reset actually sends a bunch of resets. Christmas tree sends a bunch of flags set. TCP connect is something else. A UDP, nope, and it's not doing an ACK, because an, an ACK, when it's sent out without being requested, the server responds back basically saying, what the hell are you talking about, ACK? I didn't talk to you. Uh, that is if one of the ports is open or not. Just look into that type of scan. I'm going to say it's a TCP SYN, but we didn't look into the rest of it yet. So we need to take one and look at the decode for TCP. All right, what flags are set? The only flag that is set is a SYN. Therefore, we know it's not going to be a Christmas tree because the Christmas tree has all these freaking things on. That's just the way that it works. So let's go through our options here. Okay, TCP ACK. Let's take a look over here. What's a TCP ACK? All right, the ACK scan probe packets only have the ACK flag set. That's what I said, right? Does his, does his have the ACK flag set? No. It has a send flag. The info tells us what flags are set, by the way. But we can also look right here. So the ACK is this guy. It's a zero. Flag's not set. It's not set here, or here, or here, or any of these. So it's not an ACK. It's not using UDP at all, so it's not that. All right, so let's see what a, a TCP connect specifically is. TCP connect will attempt to actually make uh, TCP this guy. All right, send scan is not an option. This is the case when the user does not blah, 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 yada, yada, freaking yada. All right. Doop, 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 doop. I'll, I'll be honest, I am completely blanking on a TCP SYN scan. What to look for? Oh, I am, but I am. Most basic form, the connect system call, provide, blah, blah, blah. If the port's listening, connect will succeed, otherwise it does not connect. Da, 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 da. Oh, duh. It's actually trying to connect directly to the port. So, no, this is this is not that because it's not doing a direct connect. It's All right, so and then it's not a Christmas tree and it's not sending the resets, which you would see with a reset scan. Somewhere. I'm over it. All right, so what is it? Well, I think it's a TCP send. I might be wrong, but I think that's what it is. All right, and what's next? What were the IP addresses of the target that he discovered? Yeah, I'm going to have to digress at that point. That requires looking at the packet and seeing what does not send the reset back. So source here, and then you're going to do an and when the response back flag set is not a reset. So, yeah, we're going to stop right there. If That's how you would do that. Let's take a look and see if I got the first two correct. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Pretty sure the first one's right. And the second one, I'm pretty sure that's right. It's going to be funny if it's not right. Uh, answers. Uh, 
Oh, I was wrong. Ah, TCP connect. I was wrong. So I was right on the IP address, and it's actually a TCP connect scan. So I need to go brush up on TCP connect scans because it has a send flag set. I thought that was. Let's look at that real quick. Do 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 do. What is this? What are we doing? Chaos tables. Oh. 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 Yes. Send scans requires a raw socket. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Listening state. Send other stealth. Send received. Oh, okay. Duh. All right. Here's what I didn't do. I didn't look to see if he, what the responses came back as I saw a bunch of resets, but the way the responses come back will tell you the difference if it's just a sin or if it's a connect. Damn it, Ryan. All right. So check it out. That's, that's exactly what the difference is. A TCP sin sends out a sin, meaning synchronize, and it's expecting back usually one of two things. One, a reset if the port's closed. Or two, it's going to receive back a sin act saying, all right, let's go. Now, if it gets back the, all right, let's go, and you're just doing scanning, you're going to mark that down as a host you've identified, a service you've identified that is up. TCP connect, and you do not, by the way, a TCP send will not send the final third stage of the handshake. It will not send the, so you get, you send a send, you get a sin act, it will not send a final act. It does not connect. That is the difference between that and the TCP connect, which will fully establish the connection. So I, I, was, for, I was blanking on how to determine from just looking at this. Did it save these? Oh, it did. Good. From just looking at this, how do I determine if this is a send attack or a connect? And I was completely failing to remember my training that says that you would have to look at the response and why don't I see the response because we're filtering ah remember that get rid of that damn filter alright so if any of these come back without a reset right if it comes back without a reset and then our user then sends an ACK to them that tells you it's a TCP connect scan as opposed to a send scan so you'd have to scroll down and look for something that replied. And I don't see a whole lot of replying going on here. Do 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 do. I wonder if uh. No, that's gonna be generic. I don't want that. Yeah. So we would do the filter for this host going out. Or actually, no, from one of these hosts. So not this host sending the response. And then with the TCP flag, actually, excuse me, I'm sorry. This being the sender and then an ACK. So we would want uh, this guy and TCP dot flag ACK. Where was that? Here you go. So check it out. Let me see, can I follow the stream here? Yeah, it's not gonna help, but here we go. So in TCP stream 7425, we try to hit oh no. Ah oh, yeah, we're actually trying to hit that. That must be a response from that's a previous stream, so that wouldn't be it. Yeah, well, I'll digress at this point because I'm not going to probably find the one that connected just doing this guy. But he eventually connects through and doesn't get a reset. Oh, I think I saw some blue there. Yeah, you can do better filters. But the TCP connect scan will fully establish the connection, whereas the TCP send scan will not respond 
even if the server side responds back in a favorable manner. Okay, so there you go. It's a TCP connect scan. All right, and then you would keep going through. Now we would let's just say that we were in the, the live contest. Well, if we submitted TCP send, and they said no. This would have been the obvious choice. Or what would have happened is we would have said TCP send and LMG if they were like on site at DEF CON or something. You text the answer to them is how the contest works. They would text you back, and they would say nope, go away. And you'd be like what? So you'd review. Or for that matter, even if you started looking at some of these, which you might not have available up front, depending on how they gave out the questions at the event. But anyways, you start looking at it, and you realize, well, okay, it's sin, and you would look for their act going back out, and you realize, oh, heck, it's freaking TCP Connect. You know it's not these. You know these easily, because it's sending a send packet, not an act packet. So it's definitely not that. It's not using that doesn't have all the flags set and it's not sending out a reset so like we said it had to be one of these guys and just you have to remember how to determine the difference this one fully establishes this one doesn't leaves the server hanging this one by the way can create a problem because when you send a synchronize and a server sends a send act back it keeps that connection open hopefully it's going to end up killing those connections and if you keep using TCP send over and over and over to the same server and it's acknowledging back and it's waiting for the third handshake. You might DDoS, the, or excuse me, you might denial of service the freaking thing, run a DOS on it. So, all right, cool. That's it. That's all, folks. Come here. There we go. Okay. So, that's it. That's session number six. We went through the puzzles. If you're interested in going through the remainder of the puzzles and you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Again, my email address, you all have it. I've been sending out messages to you all, all the time. I'll send out the YouTube link when this bad boy finishes processing, and I'm pretty sure that's about it. All right. I highly suggest you go play with these challenges. Get your hands on the tools. Remember, don't use the God code, all right? But... If you want to use it for puzzle one, puzzle two, walk through it, great. Um, heck, do it one, two, and three, and start off with four where we left off there. Go look up the different types of scans so you don't jump to a conclusion like I did. That's a TCP send scan, right? So the more you look into these things, the more you'll learn. That's it. I just want to keep shoving that down your throat. Go do the challenges. <laughs> it's good stuff. Okay, that's all I've got. All right, everyone. See ya.